Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Creative Lounge. My name is Ahmed Mohamed Bello. And on this episode of Creative Lounge, we have a mural artist who goes by the name Mustafa. You must have seen his paintings all over Abuja popular restaurants. I'm sure you don't know, but today you'll see some paintings and you'll be like, I've seen this painting before. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to Creative Lounge, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you very much. How, how has the art life been? Um, uh, you know how it is. <laughs> mm. This is Nigeria, so like every creative is struggling, you know, but we can't stop creating. Yeah. Nevertheless, so. Why did you choose this um, conventional and unique style? Why mural? Well, I love mural. I, lo I love painting on big space. I love uh, the challenge. Mm. I love conquering space. And every artist's uh, uh, satisfaction is to see that like, he has a very big piece on a very big space yeah. that is accessible to the public. You know, mm. like that's a, that's a small achievement for every artist. So, but I paint on canvas too, okay. not just on, on the wall. And I paint on newspapers, I paint on clothes, mm. I paint on almost everything. Well, any surface you any see. Any surface I see and I fall in love with the space. <laughs> I, I just paint on it. Yeah. Sometimes I used to get punished for that, but now I get paid for that. So, so it means you must have been doing it since you were a kid. Yeah. Like it's, it's a God-given talent. Okay. I just grew up knowing that, okay, I know how to create. I know how to, mm. you know, use uh, materials to create something. Okay. I just like, uh, I like creating. I've been... Creating since when I was a kid, I've been sculpting, you know, designing, like making cars out of uh, tin, tin milk, yeah, and stuff like that. With Dunlop slippers. And yeah, 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 all those things, you know. Mm. I grew up in Zaria, so there was a lot of creativity around me. I have a lot of uh, uh, mentoring from my mom when I was a kid, mm. how to draw flowers. But from there, I switched. She didn't even like my kind of art. She didn't come back. So, mm. because she taught me how to draw flowers and now I'm drawing something else. Sorry to cut you short, is your mom an artist? Not an artist, she's into agric. Uh, agric. Okay. So, but she knows how to draw. Okay. So, but I learned all the drawings from her. Okay. This, but like, but with, with my own talent and hard work, then I was able to start drawing perfectly since when I was a kid. Okay. I was able to like attend competitions and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. She must be proud of you now. I'm sure she is. <laughs> Between um, painting on walls and canvas, which one would you say you find most easy? I don't think there's anything easy in creativity. Mm. We all stand, like, it, it, it all requires you standing. Whether you're painting, because my canvas, I paint on big canvas. Okay. So I still have to stand to get my details. Big canvas, you're talking about three by three feet? No, this my smallest size is like four by four feet. Four by four. So I have like seven by five by seven feet, five by eight, like big big pieces. Those are installation pieces. Kinda, yeah. So, but I usually stand throughout my process. Okay. Working same thing on the wall, I stand throughout the process. But it depends on the you know. Painting on a canvas, I'm usually in my comfort zone. Okay. So I don't get, I can easily lie down or do something else or go get a tea mm. or go get some drink or something. Mm. But when, I, when I'm on a wall, which is usually like outdoor, I usually, I'm usually more focused. I'm usually more f faster because I know I'm outdoor, so I need to get, go back home. This is not my comfort zone. So I, I usually paint very fast. And you see me covering large pieces, like like large space and minutes and with precision. Mm. So, but when I'm at home, I feel a little, a little bit relaxed mm. because nobody's chasing me and there's no deadline. It's just me trying to like pass a message. What kind of spaces would you say you've um, painted for in Abuja here? You know. Mm. I know I've seen one of, one of your. I work. I work with cilantro. Yeah. I work with the view. I work with uh, um, albasha. 
I've worked with uh, I've worked with so many places I can yeah. like I can't even remember. I've worked with so many places, so many establishments. Mm. I work with uh, um, there's this uh, a lot of places. I mm. can't even start recalling. So when they call you to you know come paint on their walls, is it that you have designs you already have sketched, or you just you know bring them out? Normally, I, I look at the nature of the business. Okay. When I look at the nature of the business and I look at the nature of their customers, mm. then I, I, I look, I try to see, okay, I use uh, psychology on people, like what, what is missing in the space mm. that people feel, okay, since this thing is there, I feel mm. like if I patronize them, I'm this. You understand? And I give them a background to snap picture and to feel, to embody that mentality that they think, you mm. know, like there's a place I worked in, uh, in Muse Two. It's a barber shop. Okay. Um, face and bangs. Okay. Yeah. So it's for like it's for big men. Mm -hmm. So the when I look when the owner called me and he was like he needs a crazy painting and he gave me the freedom to do what I what I feel like doing I was like okay, which is what I like. Mm -hmm. I don't like being restricted when you give me space and I give you an idea, oh, this will, this will look good. You'll be like, oh, no, I think this, you know, people try to impose their creativity yeah. on you and not knowing that this, you as an artist, you visualize and you back your creativity with, uh, you know, knowing the kind of customers because you are a customer. You buy from them. You can buy from them, but they are the owners. They can't, they shouldn't be putting their own... Uh, personal uh, refer uh, referral, you know, yeah, like preference. Preference, yeah. Yeah, on the, like, on, on a public something. Yeah. You understand? It should be open. To me, you should make it, some people are minimalist. Mm. Some people like colors, but you can come to, a, you know, a compromise where yeah. you give the design a middle feeling where everybody will feel like they belong there. But most most people would like to like impose what they the, want, what they want, and mm -hmm. this is their own personal feeling towards creativity. You that's know, sentiment. That's their, that's being sentimental to yeah. me, because th most of them are minimalist. They're like, oh, I just want something simple, blah blah. But it's not for you. You are selling an idea. It's for the people. Who it's are for coming, the people to come people. and yeah. uh, you know <clears throat> enjoy the space. Yeah. You might be looking at it every day because you are the one that owns the place. So, but people might like it. People yeah. might come and be snapping pictures. You'll be surprised that, oh, this small thing is actually bringing people. Not knowing that you have to change your mentality when mm -hmm. you are dealing with business. So that's the kind of uh, contribution I bring to the table. To brands. Yeah, to brands when I'm, paint, when, I, when I'm painting on the wall, when I'm painting a mural in your establishment, I usually work on the psychology of people mm -hmm. and give you what people feel like. So I'm talking about that Babin Saloon that is, is like a royalty. Okay. And he told me that he's making the whole place look like a royal setup. Because of the kind of people that yeah, come because, Yeah, it's for rich people. Mm. You understand? So what I did was, and it's unisex. Okay. So I, when I look at the space, I saw, okay, I can actually just bring a queen and a king mm. together but not together backing themselves, but still maintaining their royal feeling. You understand? So it's a unisex. It's not for couples, but it's a unisex saloon. So I, what I did, I make the king was facing up it's on the staircase and the queen was facing down, all of them looking so good. So afterwards, then I introduced like, um, uh, uh, let me say, um, motives like uh, patterns on the wall, just simple black lines, just to make it look more royal. Mm. And I did the whole place, so and I, the lightning and everything. I actually saw this, I think, four years ago, and each time I go there, I... Yeah, let me just do about that one. Mm. When, I, when they called me, I went there, yeah. and I saw the, the space. So I was, it was hot, hot afternoon. Mm. So I was like, 
I look at the space and they was like, ah, oh, they they were rushing me that they needed they need to open this place up, blah 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 blah. They can't, they only have like three days hmm. for me to paint that thing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, and I don't use projector. No matter how big my space is, I don't use projector. I just face the wall directly. Okay. Once I visualize it, then I get my proportions. Blah, 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 start painting. Mm. And I that's why you see it hy like hyper realistic kind of yes. thing. Yes. So the thing they when they called me, I had to sit down for almost two hours to like allow the sun set. Then everywhere would start cooling off. Mm. Then I was by the I was by the lake. I sat down there trying to like get inspiration, thinking you know what to do. Then something just flashed in my head, like, oh. Hence the nature. Yeah, and it's nature. And right now, like I I, I was seeing like fingerlings inside the the, the 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 water, like seeing a lot of movement in the yeah. water. And I what just came to my head was like, okay, right now people like this feeling. This uh what what would, give people the feeling of this euphoria like in the around the water body yeah. is where and uh, that's after leaving the spot is by snapping and knowing that this is close to a water and this is this is like I, w I wanted to picture every activity but in one body mm. you understand so i i did uh i tried to make the lake I try to like personalize it. Or oh, let me say, I use the imagery of a woman mm. to 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 to, uh, to represent the the lake. A beautiful. Yeah, the beautiful image. woman. So then I start bringing in, you know, um, sea stuffs like shells, seaweeds, seaweed, shells, sea, yeah. like everything, trying to bring, and the colors. I use I use I use green and yellow. I didn't want to introduce red because red will kill the vibe. Mm. But green and yellow will still make someone hungry. Once you sit there, you start feeling hungry because you are looking at nature, like green and yellow. Then you start getting hungry. So automatically, you start looking for food to eat mm. or get a drink. We'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. If you're just joining us, um, this is Creative Lounge and you're welcome back. We have in the house um, Musti Elmerigs and we're talking about mural and um, that's his craft. You're welcome back. Thank you, sir. Yeah, just before we went on break, you were talking about, um, you know, the places you've painted mm. and your style and what inspired, you know, those things. Do you think, as an artist in Nigeria, you need to belong to a community to try? Well, you know they say if you want to go fast, you yes. go alone, mm. and if you want to go far, you go with a community. Yeah, I believe being part of a community is very important. For Do you everyone. belong to any? I belong to a lot of communities. I'm a sportsman. I belong to sport communities, art communities, mm. but I'm open to joining more communities. You understand, but. Okay. The only community that I'm yet to join is the Nigerian Artists Association. Okay. Because I, I really need to know the benefit and stuff before I will join and commit myself to you. Do you think joining them might control or limit how you charge or, you know, do you think in any way it might limit you? I don't think it will limit no. anyone to... if you. They don't, I don't think they're some artists, the some artists will tell you, oh, no, if I join a community, it's going to limit me. I'd rather move alone. No, maybe it's lack of understanding. Mm. Me, I like, I like exploring. I like seeing things for myself. Mm. So I won't just use somebody's opinion that, oh, if you, if I see it and I don't, I'm not okay with it. Nobody is forcing me. I will back out. I will join other communities that are open to, that that, that are, we are like-minded. You know that. I've, that will appreciate you, yeah. value you. But okay. I believe nobody should judge them by from outside. They should know, mm. you should meet them, you know, open open up to them, okay, let, know what they are all about. Because 
community is very important for an artist. You need it. Yeah. Community of creatives. True. Um, being a mural artist, how do you think it's beneficial to society? Well, murals have been a medium for expression. Yeah. Like dating back to the stone cave, uh, the caveman. Mm. Like this is the history of mural. Like it has been in the caves, the beginning of civilization. Like hieroglyphics. Yeah. That was even the Egyptians. Yeah. You know, the cavemen have been drawing, they have been recording stuff on the wall, like mm. a mural. Like that's the first mural that humans sh should be aware of. Mm. So from there it evolves, you know, artists, everybody, you know, some people just like working on the wall. For me, it, it has been like a, an addiction. Okay. Because I was beaten for it. I, I, got, I got punished for that. My mom was at a point you know, trying to like call my alarms to pray for me. <laughs> <'Cause you're laughs> she the thought, yeah, she thought I was possessed or something because mm. she paints the wall every year for me yeah. in my room. Because if I just if I just crack make a crack and it looks like an elephant, I will carve it and make sure it looks like it becomes an elephant. Mm. From there I would continue the story carving the wall. Like if you enter my room you think oh this boy is possessed or something. <laughs> So she was trying to call all the malans. Ah, oh, this boy, she takes it. You know, one of my teacher told her, "Madam, just calm down. He's just, he's just like that." The problem, the problem, um, children are always the talented ones. So they say, but you have to channel the energy well. You know, yeah. sometimes if you don't know how to control it, it destroys you. Like on every level, mm. you might think you have it under control, but you know. Is and is God giving energy that you're always curious, you're always trying to do new things, and the energy is real. You know, sometimes you can't even control it. Mm. You might be sleeping, all of a sudden you just wake up, hit your head on the like on the wood, and try trying to uh, sketch an idea. Yeah, something that has been like a, a creative block for months, for a long time. Now all of a sudden is the solution is in your dreams and. Ordinary people would think you are a madman. I noticed some things about your style, you know. I could call them a bit dark. Mm. You know, the kind of drawings you do with the ones you've done with pastel, mm. the ones you've done on the walls. Do you have anything that really inspires, you know, your stories? Well, they say creativity comes from the dark side. Mm then we artists, we are just a vessel yeah. to pass the message. But it depends on me. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not dark. Mm. I'm not dark. And I say, I paint how I feel. And I say what I, what I see, how it is. But from my, from my own perspective. And to be honest, I don't know how to communicate to millions of people. Mm. But my art can't. Like I can use art to reach those people, but I, yeah. me personally, I don't have the time to access do that. To you. you understand? I don't yeah. have access to them, but I believe my art like reaches a lot of places that I have not even imagined. Imagined. You understand? So your question is is a good question, but I'm not dark. Mm. I just don't know how to sugarcoat how I'm feeling. How the energy feeling? in Nigeria mm. is dark. You can't say that the energy in Nigeria is, is not dark because all you see is pain, killing, stuff. Like we all conduct energy as artists, as creatives. Mm. And what inspires you is what happened around you. Like of it's, course, it's, it's thought provoking. Yeah. So most times when I'm painting, I don't even have plans to paint that way. Okay. You understand? I just pick up a pen, maybe start drawing, maybe. If it's pastel, I would st just start painting. I paint how I feel at the moment. And there's a way I usually go back to that same feeling when I'm not done with the work. Mm. I'll have to make myself feel that way all over again, put myself back in that condition, then go back and finish the work. Mm. If I can't finish it at the moment. Mm. If not, like I can leave the work till I have that feeling all over. 
Yeah, any, everybody had to look for something to do. So, when I, 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 I saw these newspapers talking about government policies, talking about, you know, um, farming, talking about nature, talking about stuff. Then I saw the, I was like, and this was after like six months of lockdown. So, and nature was thriving on its own without the help of government, mm. without the help of any human. Nature was booming without, without our useless activities that we usually do to kill it. Mm. That inspires me. I was like, this, 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 this news is nonsense. Like, <laughs> why are you telling us government wants to boost this, boost, want to, wants to boost that when it's actually their own uh, chemical activities that, that is killing this, killing yeah. that, that is preventing the soil from becoming more richer than, you know, how it used to be, you know, like, a lot of industrial activities killing the soil killing the ozone layer and you guys are still there trying to uh, like squander money like by saying oh you want to do green green zone program or just greenwashing you understand they just want to channel the money in greenwashing mm. but you won't get to know that actually nature can do on its own without of human course, activity of course till during that was when i realized that oh, all these things so if humans can stop their activities for just some time on a particular space of uh, or a period of time you know in, on a particular space it will come back to life to come back yeah so the like nature will revive now flow, i'm, now I'm like, getting to understand yeah the story behind it so like i will mm. have to put it the way i'm thinking mm. because i believe in pictorial memory I, I believe in seeing things and it lasts in your memory longer than because yeah. that's how i learned i don't read in school but i was one of i was one of the like i was a good student mm. i don't usually read but i don't miss classes <laughs> so i usually think i usually start thinking during exam i'll have to look how the teacher is moving i'll start yes. remembering everything he was and saying what he did said, yeah, yeah all the movements that uh, uh, like so i like active teachers that will be mm. moving explaining things yeah dull teachers like the, the ones that we're talking uh, they make me sleep <laughs> so but the active ones you see me doing good in their subject yeah so i believe everybody no matter how dumb you are no matter how illiterate you are mm. when you see a picture when you see an art mm. you should be you should it should it should make you think you know Definitely. people don't like thinking it's actually simple. Mm. Once you look at the piece, you see. And once you start thinking, you connect the dots. There is a man mm. in pain. You can see the pain in his eyes. Mm. You can see him melting. And you are in Nigeria, you know, like, and there's a police on the hand. You should be able to interpret it. Yeah, and he's trying to block a, a, yeah. a, 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 like a, a stick or something. Yeah. So you should know that this guy is actually trying to protect himself from b police brutality. Mm. And uh, the pain is unbearable and he's melting. And the melt is forming another being uh, entirely, yeah. which Nigerians have become that kind of people. Let's look at this. Um, the year is running out. How would you access or evaluate let's say evaluate um the nigerian art and creative scene Whoa. in the year 2023 what would you say how do you think it um, unfolded and where do you see the art scene in 2024 well i believe creatives are the ones shaping the future mm. you know and what i've seen so far with the nigerian creative industry like art industry it's crazy. Mm. We are going on a fast lane. Like, mm. I like what I'm seeing. I like the energy. I like the enthusiasm. Like, I like everything about mm. the young artists trying to create. Make things happen. Yeah. You know, now, everybody is trying to, to, to be out there with his, with his art. Everybody is trying to be out there with his uh, creativity. Mm. You know, nobody is waiting for somebody to come and save him. Yeah, you have to push yourself. You have to do exhibitions mm. by yourself as a group or as an individual. Yeah. You know, you have to reach out to galleries mm. by yourself. Mm. So the thing is, like especially in Abuja, I've seen mm. a lot of young curators coming up. Coming up, people like you are doing a lot of good job. I'm telling you, like impressed. when I saw what you're doing, I, I was impressed. Yeah, and there's this Mister Wadu. 
from Lagos. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Like a lot of people, like your creatives, like you, you just have to like the energy. Unless if you are on the negative side, you know some people don't think straight. Mm. So they don't even when they, when you see a good thing, you you have to acknowledge yeah, this. Acknowledge you know, because Thank that's the little support we need from each other as yeah. a community. We don't need one to give us money, or, but at least we encourage each other. Mm. Yo, you are doing a great job. Even if nobody sees it, we see you and we appreciate you. Mm. This is the kind of energy that I'm seeing in the creative industry in Abuja, in Lagos. Mm. Like, we are all supporting each other. We don't care about the government. Mm. Like, with the words of, uh, like, just encouragement or just sending each other, telling each other what to do to be, be uh, to be a better artist, you know? Yeah. Like, young creatives are teaching young creatives how to be more creative in the industry and mm. you just have to give them their accolades you guys are doing a great thank you, job thank you so much you know, <laughs> i didn't i didn't know you know you appreciated no, that come much, on. but thank you <laughs> you know um we this is where we are going to call it today thank you, you know um it's been really amazing hearing your point of view knowing that you're not a dark person it's just you trying to render how you feel mm. you know in different um mediums and different styles and um you're doing really amazing too i must I thank must you so much you. but i would like to mm. you know i would like to say one more thing about people that think i'm dark mm. well sometimes you need to like i believe in bringing that your other side yeah embracing your dark side mm. knowing that oh nothing comes from mm. like the light comes from the dark they, you, I, I passed through a lot in my life, you know, yeah, my understand. past experience, mm. you know, I lost the, my loved ones. So mm. I've evolved to mm. a certain level that I, I, I have accepted the fact that the world is not sunshine, all sunshine and rosy. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bed of roses. So, but I try to portray that in my painting. Sometimes I, I you might see some of my paintings looking cool, some looking mm. sad, some trying to, like, that's just my state of mind so and i i don't feel sorry if you think it's dark <laughs> well it's not about it's a bit it's a beautiful art art is always beautiful no matter what true um just like um, you said you know your little contribution to artists is encourage them you mm. know make them feel like they're doing something very good let them get appreciated okay. that's what artists need no matter how much you try to buy a piece it's never really enough because art is priceless you know, encourage an artist today, let them feel appreciated. This is what we call it today on Creative Lounge. I remain Ahmed Mohamed Bello. Join us, same time, same station, next week. Bye for now.